What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to talk about my favorite picks for July, 2023. Welcome back to the studio, guys. Today, I have some of my favorite releases from the FUB hobby for the month of July in 2023. I'm just gonna kind of briefly go over my favorites. We're gonna talk about some accessories that were released, a brand new charger, some micro brushless quads that came out and a brand new micro sub 100 gram 4k whoop that you can take in the backyard or do some interior stabilized 4k video which is super cool and we're going to talk about my favorite release for seven inch category as well uh, for the month of july 2023 let's go ahead and get started with the first super cool little accessory that you can put on any of your micros now from hglrc all right guys one of my favorite releases for july it's from HDLRC, it's the M100 Mini. They also make a standard size one, um, M100. It's a little bit bigger, but this one's nice because it's only 16 by 16 millimeter wide. So if you wanted to put this on something like a tiny whoop, you could just solder up to the SDL and SCL connector on the flight controller if it has it, and then you're off and running with GPS return home on a little kind of tiny whoop. It's kind of crazy. Um, it does have global positioning satellite protocols for a few different ones out there. It supports Galileo, BDS, and super fast positioning. So you're gonna get up to like 20 satellites. You can also use this one on anything from a, a two inch all the way up to like a seven inch uh, realistically. It does have an extra long cable on here as well. It's probably about an eight inch cable and it has a harness connector here so that you can plug it straight into the flight controller. So if you have a flight controller that supports this type of little mini, mini JST plug here, you can plug that straight into the flight controller without having to solder things up. But the way this is pinned out, we have five volt. It also supports 3.3 volt and it has TX and RX here. And those will just hook up to your SDA and SCL tabs on your flight controller. And again, a tip, if you're trying to hook up your GPS and something happens where you're just not getting GPS packets inside Betaflight, switch these two signal wires right here and a lot of times it'll be hooked up right. So uh, I think this one's nice and it's, it's much smaller than like the other one that we've seen recently, uh, which they sent us previous specs on this when we did our review and uh, uh, we thought it was the M8, but this is actually the M10. So this kind of gives you a little bit of size comparison uh, between these two. So it's just, a, it's just quite a bit smaller. Um, it doesn't fit in these type of standard size TPU mounts. Um, like the M10 does here. This one's on the, the brand new Gap RC Moz 7 that you're looking at right here. So um, this one's kind of cool though, because it's uh, pretty much plug and play. It has a ceramic antenna on here as well. And you're gonna still get a fast connection, even like you would on something this size. So uh, just in a micro format, I think that's kind of fun. I'd like to see more micro GPSs coming out for a lot of our micro brushless. Uh, it would be super cool. And hopefully more support for GPS on our micro brushless type of uh, tiny whoop flight controllers as AIO all in ones. I wanna see more ports, more ports guys, I love it. Okay, so I, you know, if money is no object and you don't mind spending three to $350 on something that is around 100 grams that also can fly DJI O3 on board, it can also fly Caddx Vista and it can fly Walk Snail. Um, this little guy is actually extremely amazing because I'm used to flying O3s on much larger aircraft like seven inch, five inch FPV freestyle drone um, and not so much on micros. This is my first micro brushless uh, whoop category with an O3 on board. And uh, this is really honestly a game changer. Uh, you can get one of these on Beta FPV's website. I'll put the link down below. It's around $105 for this, what you see here without the O3. So you have to add your own O3. I'll try to find a link for an O3 in stock because people asked about um, where's the link for the O3 when I did a video recently. So I'll, I'll try to find some that are in stock for you guys and, and link those down below. But again, you can set it up with Walk Snail Avatar or, or a Caddx Vista if you want to. Uh, you can also do an analog version if you really want to, but why would you do that when you have the Meteor 7.5? Um, this one is brushless. It comes with the Pavo Pico um, frame kit. That's a carbon fiber unibody 
inverted prop design on here. And I talked about this one in the review. It was so much fun because it's flying on 2S and this 2S450 can give me about three and a half minutes flight time. And it has 1102 motors in here uh, with push on props. So it makes it super simple to, to work on uh, being able to replace props. Now that by hand, but I say work on, this is the hardest to work on as far as putting this one together. It took me some time. I really had to kind of slow myself down and just really be super detailed about my soldering um, because I've been doing a lot of soldering on seven inch, 10 inch builds and five inch freestyle builds recently. And I, I haven't had to put together a tiny whoop in some time and putting this one together was a pain in the ass, I swear to God. Uh, but it does have rubber dampening in between this O3 unit. It's kind of a two stage design like we talked about before. Um, it does have 12 amp ESCs on here. So I'm kind of wondering with 1102 motors, if I could actually run 3S on here, this thing would be a total beast. But as it is, it has good, it feels good in the air. You can freestyle this or you could use it for like real estate fly through type videos. Um, it's, it's kind of amazingly, fun to fly and as far as fun factor goes for the month of July this is my biggest fun factor and I dare I say that because you guys know that my my favorite is a seven inch class series or bigger uh, FPV drone so yeah I fly seven more than probably just about anything out of all the quads that I have but this one I've really taken a new interest to wanting to fly this one more and make videos with it because it does make gorgeous videos with Rocksteady 2.0. So um, fun factor of this one was definitely like two thumbs up, which I, I don't give that often. You, you've probably seen some reviews in the past where certain things get two thumbs up. And if something gets two thumbs up on this channel, it's usually one of those things that like sells out and people buy it. And then they're like, thanks Justin for letting me know this was so awesome. I love it and hundreds of other people you know, come back with the same feedback. And a lot of times it's like GAP RC or iFlight type stuff that gives those type of reactions um, out of the box. But this one is one you're gonna have to build yourself. You're gonna have to troubleshoot it yourself, set up the receiver and all that good stuff. Um, get the ELRS SPI working if you're gonna use the built-in SPI on here. It does have that built-in receiver, but it's also nice because it has plug and play motors on all the way around the sides. So if you have a motor blow out, you can just plug another one in and you're off and uh, back in the game. So I feel like it's gonna be fairly durable. Someone recently told me that they crashed theirs into concrete and it survived, but my uh, probably a big tip to you is to run the TPU camera mount cover on the front because this camera really sticks out up front and you have a lot of camera just way out front on this quad so you can pretty you can do pretty high speeds but the saving grace of this quad is that if you do crash it's fairly lightweight and it doesn't cause a lot of damage uh, but it does feel kind of top heavy but it, it's the good news is it didn't have any tumble or washout or flight controller freak out on the big maneuvers with this quad so um, if you can get past that the price you're gonna have a lot of fun um, past the setup and the price. It's, it's definitely worth it at the end of the day. And I look forward to making more videos with the Pavo Pico. Um, and some more freestyle videos with this because it just, it flies great. It really does. Um, but just make sure you're flying with a, a camera cover. You wanna cover up that lens with an ND filter or some kind of UV cover. Um, I have the UV cover on mine that they sent in the kit. So uh, I'm gonna protect my O3 camera there because that's my O3 unit, not beta FPVs. I had to put my own on there. So uh, they didn't send me one. But again, for around a hundred bucks, you know, throw a receiver and an O3 unit on there. At the end of the day, you're probably looking at around like two, uh, oh no, 300, probably $350 for an out the door type of setup with this after you put a receiver on there, especially if you're gonna do crossfire like I did. Um, but I have one laying around and that's my setup for that. And that's one of my favorite things in July. And I'm gonna make some more videos with this little guy because it's just too much fun not to fly. I freaking love the Pavo Pico. It's so much fun. Now my next favorite not sub, sub 250, it's HGLRC's Baby Shark 16, otherwise known as the Drash Shark. Uh, mine came inside this box right here and it seems that they made the box a little bit too short and now I have a permanent kind of lean to the right with mine. So I just have to keep pushing that back. But I, you know, this one was analog, completely flown on analog. It came with a different style connector on here that I switched out for my BT 2.0 connector because I have a ton of these batteries. 
Uh, GetRC has been, uh, or Beta FPV has been super, super generous and sent me tons of batteries. So this flies great on 1S. And I, you know, when I did the review of this one, I was zipping around the yard in analog, just having a, a super fun time with how fast this little baby shark was in the backyard. Like it's one of the, I, I think I said it was the fastest micro that I've flown in the backyard. Any tiny whoop micro brushless style quad ever in the backyard. Um, with the exception of the, the, I guess the beta FPV Pavo Pico recently that I flew on like 35 degree tilt. Um, but this one is fun because this one's around a hundred dollars. Um, it has the AO board on here. It has this little micro cam up front that is just kind of held in by the TPU here. The cable goes down through here and it's cool because it also has plug and play motors. If you don't feel like soldering them back on a motor, if you break one, that's no problem. We have our USB port there, our 1S 450 milliamp battery tray right there. It goes front to back and in the back also, this is kind of cool um, that this flight controller implements everything all in one here, you can pop this tail off and then you have access to the flight controller. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. You can just bend it to the side and you can see the UFL connector there for the antenna, the dipoles coming out through the top there. And where the only thing I see soldered down to this board really is the camera, three wires on the camera right here and two on the VBAT. Um, and that's pretty much it on it. It's a really simple build and it would be easy to work on for beginners. So I feel like this quad is great for your first non-tiny whoop style quad that you just want to rip with and have a good time. I, I guess the flight time is probably the, the biggest limiting factor of this one. Um, it does have some pretty big motors on here for how big it is. Uh, 1002 and those are 21,000 kV um, bi-blade props. If you put some tri-blades on here this thing would probably uh, rip around the yard, maybe do a little bit better freestyle. But one uh, quad that I want to show you, apart from this one, is next up by Sub 250. But this one was a ton of fun and probably one of my favorite micro brushless from this entire month. And okay, if we want to talk about some rock and roll freestyle backyard ripper action, this Sub 250G Nanofly 20, this this little beast right here was fun. It kind of comes with its own little carrying case. It has a screwdriver in here. It has the directions. It also has a little Allen key and some a couple pieces of extra hardware. But the props that came with are HQ. These are, I believe they were like, uh, these are two inch size props. And dudes, this quad was a ripper in the backyard. And you can fly this one in a little bit bigger space. So if you have a small yard, you could still fly this one in this small backyard, but you could also take it somewhere like a baseball field, uh, school or park, and kind of fly this one without having a lot of Karens come up to you because it's, it's not super noisy. And it doesn't sound like you're like flying 100 miles an hour. It's actually pretty, pretty silent for how big this is. It's also super durable because it does have the TPU top plate on here, the AIO flight controller, and this one does have a full size TBS Crossfire antenna on here. So I have my Mortal T across the bottom right here, and it has a receiver tray halfway up on this sort of uh, canopy mount here, which is kind of cool. They include that little tray. It's a little clear tray. You can put anything you want on it. You still have extra room above where the receiver is. So there's a lot of room inside here. And this one also has a Cadex Ant camera on here for uh, a little bit better camera action than what the Drash Shark has. But just give you a little comparison between the Drash Shark and the little Nano Fly here. Nano Fly 20, two inch and 1.6 inch right here. Both of these are just absolutely a ball to fly. And if you want something small and portable, go for this one, you'll love it. Um, if you want something a little bit bigger where you can take out to bigger fields, you have a bigger place to fly, the Nano Fly 20 is a lot of fun. And moving right along for another one of my favorites for July, the Gap RC Moz 7. This quad right here, it is definitely much different animal than the Chimera 7 V3 that we flew. It's much different than the Gap RC Crocodile 75 V3 as well. Um, it has kind of a, a more wider body in the middle here and a lot of room inside this, under this top plate. We, we took the, the, plate, the top plate off during the review and there's just so much real estate inside here to be able to add extra components if you need to add an extra external beeper and things like that. My only gripe with this one is that it didn't come with an external beeper and if you're flying long range, 
you, you, I, I always recommend having an external beeper. It's crazy not to have one. Uh, but this one will fly the much larger batteries that we have out there. It'll fly the 8,000 packs. And GEP RC just released their own series of packs, which we're gonna be testing as well coming up on the channel. And you can also fly the full send. Um, this is actually labeled different, I think, but this is the 8,000 pack. And look how much size we got here. This is like definitely a size queen type of quad. And you're gonna be able to get like 25 to 30 minute flight times with this quad. Um, this one is more of an industrial design than GEP RC has done in the past. They beefed up these motors on here. Even though they are bigger, they are lower KV than the Crocodile. So these are 2809, 1280 KV motors. And you can tell they're just a little bit more um, kind of like rigid across. They don't have a, a really fancy, super fancy bell, but I love the way that they look as far as the anodized red aluminum here. Let's see if I can get that to focus for you. These are super nice motors. They're just beautiful. That was the first thing that I noticed when I pulled it out of the box was how nice these motors look. And they are Speedex branded motors, Gap RC on the other side. And we're rocking seven and a half inch props on this. So if you've never flown a seven inch, it's kind of hard to explain to you. I'll show you some video right now. But once you're up in the air on a, a seven and a half inch, it feels a lot like an RC glider as you're kind of just swooping along. It feels very bird-like. Um, and coming up and over and below things with this quad felt really smooth, really natural. And what I came back with was super impressive video. I didn't see any vibes. I was also using some rock steady to kind of smooth out things because sometimes a seven inch or a seven and a half inch can give you some vibes. We did some other reviews with other quads that came in uh, this year in the seven inch category that, that gave us some vibes right in the stabilized DJI video. So if there's vibes in the stabilized video, imagine what I'm seeing in my, uh, my real time view on the goggles, much more vibes. So um, that's, that's the thing. This one came out of the box, plug and play. It was ready to rock with some TBS Crossfire on here. Um, I've got my M10 updated GPS in the very back. My original specs said that it had the M8 on there. And since they released this one on the website, if you look, it says M10 on there. So um, there's a correction on that. But this one is a stationary back end on here. It doesn't flex or uh, move like the Chimera one. So if that the good thing about this is you're flying, it's not gonna change direction on you or uh, kind of fall down while you're flying. So this one's a stationary design in the back, very beasty in the back. And it has a little less angle on the XT60 as well. I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of when they angle these connectors too far back because that changes the CG of the battery. If you don't have a super long cable, you find yourself sliding the battery back. And then if you're not using a GoPro, that's where that's kind of a problem. But it does have kind of an H frame configuration, dead cat style. And uh, I, don't, I don't believe I saw any props in the view in this video. So um, this one came back like doing really well. I feel like I want to freestyle this one. Um, I don't know if you've ever flown any type of uh, freestyle on a seven inch, but I don't recommend that on the Lion. If you're brand new to long range and seven inch, don't try to freestyle with the Lion because these don't like high amp draw. So what do you want to do? If you're going to freestyle a large quad, you want to use something like a LiPo um, with, with, instead of a Lion. Lions are for cruising and LiPos are for, you know, doing a little more powerful maneuvers or light freestyle uh, maneuvers. They can handle high amp draw let's go ahead and move on now to my next favorite. So next up, one of my favorite picks from July is the brand new Axis Flying Argus F7. It's an AIO flight controller specifically made for Cinewoops. And this really simplifies the build. You can wire this up for analog or HD. It has an HD port on here native to the DJI 03. So if you're trying to, to do a DJI 03 build for a Cinewoop, this is awesome. You can turn it on a 45 as well. Um, it does support black box on here. It has an F7 flight controller built in with the built in uh, nice, nicely, uh, kind of a pink anodized aluminum heat sink on here as well. They have USB-C support and we have four motor support and we have support for GPS. If you want to add GPS to this one, like that little mini M100 that I showed you before, um, this one has a lot of options, but it's also under $100, which I think is super cool. Now it has kind of a weird setup as far as where each motor is. Um, if you look at the very bottom, it tells us the specs on here. 
They do have uh, a barometer on board as well, which I, I, I love that it has a barometer for any type of GPS type setup. And we have a built-in BEC. We have peak current at around 50 amp on here as well, and 40 amp built-in BL Heli S ESCs. I already put the dampeners on here as well. Uh, I know some of you guys probably want to know like what the height of this is from the side, from top to bottom here. I'll try to pull out that information for you. Uh, we're looking at 8.8 .8 millimeter there. So uh, that's pretty tiny as far as uh, top to bottom. And that's from the bottom of this stack up to the top of where the bolts would be coming out and that nut. So. Um, yeah, 8.8 .8 millimeters, and it's pretty lightweight too. It's around 14.7. Uh, if you take the heat sink off, you could lighten it up to about 8.8 .8 grams. That's not bad for a flight controller and ESCs built into one little tiny AIO stack. And this flight controller will power up to 6S. So guys that want to build something like a 6S Cinewoop for a little bit of freestyle and some cinema, this little guy can handle that. Um, and it should fly pretty well with an F7 uh, and just a stock beta flight tune. If we build this one up for you guys, which we'll probably do at some point on the channel, I'll give you guys some PIDs for it. We'll share those with the community as well inside our Discord. Okay, now we're moving on to last but not least because this charger is gonna change the way I travel. Um, this is great. This will charge up to a 6S battery and it has support all the way up to a 6S LiPo input. So we can go in on this side over here. Uh, it actually does from DCN 10 to 28 volt, and it also does PD 3.0 input there for any type of battery bank on a USB-C. Uh, so you can power it from a power bank, charge LiPos on the road. So um, you can also get adapters, by the way, to make this a full-time bench charger if you wanted to, and be able to plug it into the wall. Um, that's kind of cool. I'll try to find a link for one of those for you guys, but you have a full color screen on here. I mean, this thing is pretty dope for like, how small this thing actually is and they're like $36. Um, you have push button navigation here. We have a back button. It shows all of our info here for battery inputs. Uh, I just think it's rad that this one's so small and it charges LiPo. Uh, it'll charge LiFe batteries and it'll also do LiHV. So LiPo HV as well on here. Um, front navigation up down right here. We have the 6S balance charge port right here. This is your output port for XT60. And what I really thought was pretty cool is that you're looking at a physical fan on something that's literally about the size of a business card. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, we can go in here and we can change the parameters as well. If you long press this button right here, it will take you into the different internal menus for safety timer. We can do max capacity charge up to 12,000 milliamp there. Uh, it'll do trickle charging, high voltage charging. Um, press back there, it'll take us down to the system settings. You can go in there and change the language. We can change the minimum input voltage. Right now it's set to 11, so if you try, put it, tried to, to plug in a 2S battery, it, it would not work. So um, let's see as low as we can go is like 10 volt there. So 2S battery. So it's gonna take like a 3S battery or more to get this to power up. I've, I've had chargers in the past not power up when I was out the field and I'm like, why is this not working when the other charger worked? Well, the lowest voltage sometimes can be around the 3S for some of these. Um, we can do um, completion single once beep, which I, I usually turn the beeps down on a lot of my chargers because it's kind of annoying. DC power, we have the current voltage uh, and the max voltage on the way, uh, by the way, on here is, is 200 watt, but also output current, is, the max is five amp. So, I mean, for something this small, five amp is not bad, you guys, it's not bad at all. So most of our charging that we're doing is like, if you're gonna charge like a 4S pack, a lot of times you're gonna do, you know, say 1.5 on this one, say 1.5C, plug it in here, and let's just do an example of a quick charge. We'll put this one in, and you wanna start negative side over here. This is a 4S battery, so um, sometimes these chargers have auto connect. We're just gonna hold long press, should go back to the main menu, all the way out. No, 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 no back, long press back getting me out of there. Okay, so we're gonna go into the bottom. We got a battery meter. And sometimes I use these as kind of like a battery checker, but this is kind of cool. So once you have this plugged in, 
it shows you all the information here for the LiPo. Um, this is not an HB R line, but it gives us our total voltage there. It gives us three bars, 15.8. And if I wanna start that process, I'm gonna push that button and the battery type is LiPo. It detected 4S. The task, we're gonna do a charge. Let's see how many different types of things we can do. We can balance charge, we can charge, we can storage charge, we can discharge. Let's see, let's go to charge, press charge here. And now we're going to change the voltage current. Voltage currently is at three amp. And we don't wanna charge that quickly. That's a little bit quick and you can cause things to swell. So we're gonna go back down to 1.5 amp there. And we're gonna start that charge. Go all the way down to the bottom to start and bam, you're off and charging. And now it's gonna give me a kind of an audible beep when this is all done. But I just thought this one was super cool because it's 200 watt, it'll charge up to five amp, and it's about $36. It just looks cool too. Kind of looks like a little toy, but my favorite thing about it is the, the, side that, the fact that it, it, it does have a full size fan is the fact that this one is a microcharger and it can charge up to a 6S battery on here. So you could also use some type of parallel charging port or balance charger. If you wanted to charge up to like six batteries at once on this one, you can do that also. So I thought this one was like a, a super cool little charger for the, the portability of this one. What I would really like to see Sky RC do is I know this might be asking too much, but wouldn't it be amazing if we had a small charger like this that was a dual port charger that had two ports on it somehow? Um, I don't know how in the world they could pack another charger on here somewhere, but if that was possible, that would be crazy amazing for a, a, a tiny little travel charger with dual ports. Cause I usually have to charge uh, two batteries at least at once for what I do. So I always like that D6 uh, Duo Pro. You guys have seen that Hoda charger that I recommend before. So I'll put all these links down below. If you guys enjoyed this month's favorites, be sure to subscribe on the channel because I'm definitely gonna bring you more favorites uh, each month as we go along during the year from Drone Camps RC to you guys. So this is my honest favorites for this month. And I'll come back, I'll see you next month in August, and we'll talk about the faves in August. The month's not over yet, so if I have some new ones coming up, you'll see them in the reviews. Take care, everybody, and happy FPV. I'll see you on the next one.